Baie welkom by ons program Woord Actueel. Onthou ons hanteer actuele onderwerpe. En jy wat Afrikaans is vandag gaan die program in Engels wees, met een specifieke doel, want ek het Ben Swartz hier, ons gaan hom nou voorstel, van die Zionist Federation, hy is een jood, en hy gaan met ons wiekie praat oor Israel. Ek gaan hierdie jaar vir die twintigste keer, of volgende jaar, twintigste keer Israel toe, ek neem toergroepe, en ons het nodig om te weet, wat God wil hy ons rondom Israel moet verstaan en rondom die jode moet verstaan, want ons te verantwoordelikheid, daar is een begrip in Genesis 12, 3, dat as ons hulle seen, die Heere ons sal seen en ek dink hierdie begrip moet verstaan word om toegepast te kan word dis nie dat ons een nasie verhef boe ander nie, maar dis baie belangrik dat ons verstaan dat Jesus was een jood en God het gekies om om aarde toe te stuur dier die joodse familie en dis van kardinale belang vir elke persoon wat na Jesus kyk as een verlosser Ben, welcome on the program Ben Swartz is actually an Afrikaans name but very Jewish because Benjamin is a very Jewish name from the tribe of Benjamin And uh, just introduce yourself to the people that are watching the program. Who's Ben Swartz? What do you represent? What are you doing in South Africa? Right. Uh, well, first of all, Pastor, thank you very much for having me on the show. Very excited to be here with you today. And uh, yeah, well, just a big thank you. Um, who, who, is, who is Ben Swartz and, and who do I represent? Um, I, as you mentioned, I am I'm a Jew. I'm both a South African Jew and I'm also a, an Israeli Jew. Um, I was born in South Africa and uh, at the end of my schooling, I made a very important decision and decided to go and live in Israel for many years. Um, it, uh, it, it was a passion of mine to, to, to take that opportunity. But then you had to be drafted into the army as well. Uh, it does happen like that. There is a, there is a thing when you do become naturalized at a, at a certain age, uh, you do need to go and perform army service or community service. And uh, is that still three years today? It, 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 it is still reduced? three years. Well, w w for men, it's three years uh, at a minimum. That's the compulsory uh, conscription. And for women, it's uh, generally two years. But obviously after that you can choose to make a career of it and, and many Israelis find themselves, many of the best and the brightest Israelis uh, find themselves in, in the army as a career, as, uh, as, as no doubt people would know, yes. Um, so I stayed in Israel for, for, for close on six years um, and uh, I got to live, eat, breathe and, and be part of the country. And, I think in, in passing before you mentioned that you, you've been, well, you, actually you mentioned it now, you've been to Israel 20 times, and I think we can probably both relate to the, the, the when Israel resonates with you, the, the, the beauty of the land, the power of the land is, is just the most unbelievable experience. And uh, that's what it was like for me living there for, for, for all those years. I just want to say something that was amazing to me. I said, Lord, uh, when you, at the Sinai Desert, I said, God, this is so God forsaken. How come you came to or sent your son to such a God forsaken place? Right. And the Holy Spirit said something so powerful to me. He said, so that the most God forsaken person will know that I care. Right. And that really About, meant yeah. something to me. Right. So the Sinai Desert has another meaning. Yeah. Because that Sinai, Sinai Desert, when you look at it in a dry season, yeah. without the devil, it's a temptation. Right. <laughs> but continue. Yes. So, um, I spent a number of years in Israel and uh, I came back to South Africa. Uh, you know, the, the, my South African blood is, I, I guess, just as thick as my, my, my Jewish Israeli blood. And um, both your parents Jewish? Yes, that's right. Yeah, mm. and and through and through circumstances, I ended up coming back to to South Africa. 
Uh, like any person, my, my, my career became a big part of my professional career and I, I spent many years in, in business, uh, in, in, in the technology arena, in, in certain financial services arena. And one of my greatest concerns is because of my, 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 my passion and my love for, for, for Israel, the land of Israel and the Jews, I, I, I became subsequently very involved in the, the South African Jewish community. Um, in all sorts of areas of this How community. big is the Jewish community in South Africa? To, today the South African Jewish community is no more than I would say, and there's no, se there's no census to confirm the numbers, but our estimation is between 70 and 75,000. That's basically, a lot of people. Basically limited to Johannesburg and Cape Town. That would be the large bulk of the community. Uh, there used to be, I mean the community used to be, and, and this again is unsubstantiated, uh, it was as much as between 150 and 200,000. But that, that has dwindled over the last, uh, I'd say, 30, 40 years um, as, 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 as people have gone to Israel. Or have people, people gone back to Israel? A, a great deal. I, I think the number of South African Jews born here that have gone to Israel is, is that have made Aliyah over the last, should we say, 60 years, is, is, is I think around about 20,000. So I, I state these numbers, but they're all unsubstantiated because mm -hmm. the, the exact numbers aren't exactly known. But I, I know these are the, the, the ballpark figures that, that I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning at the moment. And then with where are you involved at the moment? So, so Obviously, because of my, my passion for Israel, I, I, I decided at uh, probably two, three years back that I needed to start uh, taking my energy and investing it into the, the Zionist community, the Jewish Zionist community. When you say just to everybody yeah. listening and looking, what does it entail, the Jewish Zionist uh, community. Well, well, as if 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 you if you know any Jews, I think there's one thing that 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 Jews are known for is they tell a story that uh, if there are two Jews, there's generally three opinions. You know, that's I thought it was worse with the Afrikaners. Well, that's if two <laughs> Afrikaners. There's four opinions yeah, exactly. in five churches. Right. So so I guess I guess you can relate to what I'm saying. So so what I'm saying within within the Jewish world, I mean, as much as we believe and I believe and you hope that it is homogenous and, and that there's a large degree of, of unity, solidarity and common understanding, I, I think the very essence of existence is that we are humans and we have free choice. And and so even within the Jewish world, there are people with different views, different opinions, and, and different beliefs. And, and you might have within the Jewish community a Jew that holds Israel very close to their hearts uh, and cares very much for, for, for both the land and the people and the religion of Israel. On the other hand, you might find a Jew that, that Israel is not on his priority list. Uh, South Africa is, is his only priority or if he lives in Australia or in America that is his identity and, and that's where he places his energy and his focus. So there, there are differences. I believe that our, as, as the Jewish nation, the, the nation of Israel, that, that our, our God-given responsibility is not just to God but it is to the people of Israel and it is to the land of Israel. And for me, I, I struggle to separate those and hold them in isolation. And, and for that reason, particularly in South Africa, I believe that it, it became my responsibility, my personal responsibility, to uh, be part of the Zionist uh, community within in South Africa and strengthen it. Both what, what do you do when you do you get together as a group and what do you do? We, we get together as a group, um, it's, it's, it's a structured organization, the Zionist Federation itself is the oldest Jewish uh, community organization in South Africa, it's, it's 114 years old. Um, so it's got a very deep history and it, the, the Zionist Federation of South Africa precedes the, the existence of the modern day state of Israel. Israel was uh, uh, declared an independent state uh, uh, the modern state of Israel in 1948, as, as I'm sure you may well know. Yes. And uh, the, the Zionist Federation was established in South Africa, uh, mm. what, 40, mm. 50 years before that, uh, in anticipation 
because you know it didn't just happen in 1948 that the, the, the state was declared it was a process that had started in the 1800s where people had said you know what uh, we can go back to Israel it's our calling it's our, our, our responsibility and the movement started then and South Africa was right at the front of the curve and so no doubt the Zionist Federation came into existence at that point and to, today we find ourselves uh, 114 years down the line State of Israel is uh, that's 52, uh, 64 years old, if I'm not mistaken. And although the dynamics have changed, the responsibilities, I believe, of the Jewish uh, nation, whether it be in Israel or outside of Israel in the diaspora, our responsibilities to Israel are, are very great and, and very real, and there's much to be done. Um, as an organization, we get together and we, we, we decide on initiatives, projects, programs, in terms of how we strengthen the Zionist character and, 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 and the relationship between the South African Jewish community and Israel. It's, it's not something that just happens. We, we've got to go out there and work at it and, and teach people and educate people and involve people and do programs and initiatives uh, to ensure that people appreciate uh, the relevance and the importance of Israel within the uh, character or personality of the Jewish people. Um, so with that, the Zionist Federation goes and works closely with the Jewish community. It's also responsible for representing the South African Jewish community and its relationship with the State of Israel. So we're very involved in making sure that our relationship between the Jewish community and, and, and the State of Israel is safeguarded, is intact, and then remains strong and robust. The people of the Zionist Federation, or the Jews as a whole in South Africa, um, when you go to Israel, they're sort of among the young people where you get the Hasidics and the dedicated um, people in serving God. There's a withdrawal, as it were, from the, of, of the young people that do not have that same kind of interest. Do you experience the same in South Africa? First of all, I'm, I think, I think you, you, you can argue the opposite, and I've been watching it closely over the years. As, as, as much as I'm not an outwardly observant person, I'm, I'm a very religious person inside. And, uh, mm. and I believe for, 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 the, for the Jewish people, I think it's, it's pervasive throughout. I think you might find a religious man that looks like a chassid with the long peyote and the black hat mm. and the black jacket. And you might find a, a guy with a knitted yarmulke and looks and behaves just like me or you. Or you might find someone that's more aligned like me, looks very progressive, liberal or Western, but at the same time cleaves and holds very strongly to, 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 to Jewish beliefs. Um, what I'm trying to say is actually two things. Is I believe that Israel, quite to the contrary, has become the platform for the Jews moving very much closer and back towards God and, and strengthening their relationship with God. Um, you know, just the other day it was the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur, and, mm. and they say up to the Jewish New Year. Uh, together, close, yeah. yes, it's all, it's all within 10 days of one another. And they say up to 65, 70% of Jews observe uh, the Day of Atonement in one way or another, which is a very large number. And I'm not sure it was that big 10, 20, or even 50 years oh, ago. That's interesting. That's right. Um, <clears throat> I believe a lot, uh, I believe that a lot of Jews, you see, when you live in Israel, when you live in Israel, your, your whole framework, your whole reference point is within this Jewish reference point. So you might not be on the outside a person that looks like a, a Hasid or a, a Lubavitch or one of these, the black coats as they call them, or the Haredi world, which is the ultra-Orthodox world. But when it comes to Rosh Hashanah being the New Year, when it comes to Yom Kippur, when it comes to the Feast of Tabernacles as, as we are right now, you, you just live it. You know, it's a public holiday. The, 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 the festival, the religious festival, is a public holiday. So whether you're an, an outwardly observant person or you're not, everything stops. Everyone goes and builds their booths, the, 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 the Sukkot as they call them. Yeah, I know uh, that. The because hotels it's everywhere. That's right. So, so as much as you might look like a, a secular, progressive, liberal person, you're part of the process. You're celebrating it. It's not the perfect world. It's not perfectly religious. But you speak the language. You speak the holy language of Hebrew as 
when you go out shopping or when you're talking to your friends. And now that again is something that 60, 70 years ago it would have been dreamed of. So this, this whole relationship of people with religiosity or actually living Judaism is just alive and vibrant and happening in Israel. Whether, whether your mental relationship with, with the rituals of Judaism or with God is as strong as a black coat, as I say, or it's like a progressive liberal or Western person, the framework keeps you Jewish. It keeps you connected to these traditions and these rituals of, 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 of Would of you old. say that many of the Jewish people that come out of uh, the traditional Jewish way of thinking, the Jewish way of acknowledging God, looking at uh, going through Bar Mitzvah and everything, have turned to Christianity? What would you, what is your experience with that? I, I think the mainstream as a, as a whole have stayed very focused on the Old Testament. Mm. Um, when you say the old, the five books of Moses. Uh, as we call it, the, the yes, the, the Tanakh, the, yeah. the, 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 the teaching of the, the Torah, the five books of Moses. Yeah. Nevi'im is the prophets. Yeah. And Ketuvim are the writings, which includes all the different books, whether it be the book of Esther, whether it be Song of Songs, mm. whether it be Psalms. So that compilation uh, remains very much at the heart of the Jewish world. Yeah. yeah. Because our experience in Israel is, I think the first time I went in 1989, there were a couple of Christian churches. Today, when we go, they speak of 130. Whether it's that figure, you know, I cannot prove that, but uh, um, it's very interesting for us in terms of when we go to the Feast of Tabernacles, mm. Um, I used to go on a regular basis. Right. Now, when we take two groups, we you either go to the Feast of Tabernacles because, or you go to Israel because it's too tiring to do both. Mm. And uh, there's just some scripture here that's very interesting to me out of Zechariah 12. Mm. It says, and I'm just going to read, tuck up from verse 2, Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all the nations of the earth are gathered against it. It's interesting, a cup of reeling, a heavy stone to pick up. And uh, in May 1948, when Israel became a nation, I think it was within a week that three nations, three countries stood up against Israel. It was seven to eight. Seven to eight they, countries. They, they attacked from three countries, but you, for oh. instance, they, even though they attacked from Jordan, if I'm not mistaken, the forces of Iraq and even from the Saudi world were involved in that attack. So it was mm. actually seven to eight armies that attacked. And, and God supernaturally took you through. I, I, I guess that's a matter of opinion. Some people might say it was luck. Some people might have said it was hard work. Uh, and a lot of people say it was the, the hand of God. I, I, I like to believe in all three. But no, I, I certainly believe that it was a miracle. Uh, you and, know, sometimes people yeah. want to stand back and say, uh, let God do it, but right. God uses people. You know, when we look through the Old Testament, uh, when uh, they came into the Promised Land with Joshua marching around Jericho, I mean, if you have to say there's military strategy at screaming and walls fall down, it doesn't make logical sense. Yeah. But uh, it's like the, the seven day war, the six day war. I know the people say it was six and a half days, not just six days. And uh, that was a miraculous intervention. Yeah, absolutely. Were you involved in the army? Um, I was. I mean, as part, of, as part of being an Israeli citizen, I was, yeah. uh, I was, I was drafted. But you were not on the front, you were not in the fighting, in the fighting area. Uh, I was exposed to interesting circumstances. I, w I was I was exposed. Um, I, for me, it was a it was a very interesting decision and a, and a very difficult and an interesting time. I was I was uh, drafted. I, I I'm I'm not a militant person. I'm actually quite pro reconciliation, and I believe in a solution for every conflict and every pain. And I wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to go and and and, and see the other side of the coin. 
as, as, as such. And, and so uh, uh, having become a, a citizen of of Israel, I, I was I was in a position to go and serve and 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 see the other side. Uh, it, 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 was, it's, it was important for me. Um, yeah, and that and at, that at the moment Israel is very much in the news, and sadly, um, the South African government doesn't really support Israel. Um, it's sad because. Uh, I think many people listening to this program, watching this program, Afrikaans people are very pro-Israel. Um, what is your experience on that on on that uh, front at the moment? Okay, it's it. I'm very cautious to 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 pronounce on. Uh, no, let me let me just rephrase that. What, so so the question, if I might just ask, and I, I do have mm. to think through carefully is that you're saying what is my view in terms of the South African government's relationship towards Israel at this point in time? I know it's a sensitive no, issue I, no, no, I will and, and they might answer. have reasons why they do things. Right. To me it's just, uh, uh, I just want to read the scripture right. that uh, I mentioned in the beginning. This scripture has really spoken to me mm. in Genesis 12 3 it says I will bless those who bless you. I will curse him who curses you. And in all, and in, and in, sorry, in, and in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. In you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Mm. I was praying for a person one time, and uh, 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 while I was praying for this person, a lady came running up and said, I see you praying, but the prayer ricocheting off the person. So I said, God, what's wrong? And the Lord said, the curse of Genesis 12, 3. And I said, in terms of what? And this lady's father had been one of the German officers at Auschwitz. Mm. Now, uh, we know that the curse of the fathers comes the, to the third and fourth generation blessing to a thousand generations. And when we broke that, the Lord touched and healed her and it's interesting that um, you know when you go to Israel and you go to Yad Vashem and you look at all that we can't camp in the past but the past happened um, when six million Jews were killed um, you walk through that and uh, I, I battle with man's inhumanity to man and how the Jews were treated I battle with that mm. because my family tree, my great-great-grandfather started the first Jewish synagogue in South Africa and I battle with that in terms of how can people treat people, they treat their dogs better. But um, what is your experience at the moment in terms of the government, has it caused friction? I, I, we, we are very concerned. Um, look, for a whole lot of practical reasons. The government of today in South Africa is supportive of the Palestinian cause. You know, if you put yourself, if you're trying to put yourself in a fair and objective position, mm. you you can understand to a degree where they are coming from. The, the ANC during the time of apartheid, when they were in in the trenches fighting for their liberation, or if they were in Russia and learning the ropes of of of, of a fighting a war as they were preparing they were there together with the leadership of the PLO who who at the same time represent a people uh, in areas of Israel that that are disenfranchised so not only are they do they see themselves as as comrades in arms they also see themselves supporting a people that to a degree are dispossessed of, of, of certain rights and because of Israel's existence that that being said the, the situation in Israel, if you want to call it Israel slash Palestine and, and, and the areas in the Middle East, is not a simple situation. It's a very complex situation, as we all know. Absolutely. Uh, there's issues of land, there's issues of people, there's issues of culture, there's issues of politics, there's issues of religion. And at the end of the day, a solution needs to be found whereby all men, Jewish or Muslim or Christian, or with the conflict is really between Jews and Muslims there, 
need to work out on their own accord how to live together, how to work it out. You know, you, you, you make an example, and it's a very important point to note, is, is, is the Jews need to protect themselves. We've learned, unfortunately, from what you've just pointed out, through the effects of the Holocaust, that if we put our faith and trust in another people to be the army that protects us, unfortunately, we, we stand in line to get a great hiding. And we're not just talking mm. about the Holocaust, we're talking about two, three thousand years of history, of pain, blood, and persecution. We, we've been there, we know it, we understand it. And for, for, for Israel to work out the issues with the Palestinians, the parties need to talk and work out what is fair, balanced, and amicable for the parties so everyone can, can live honestly and equally. Mm -hmm. Over the last 60, 70 years, Israel has offered a solution, a peace solution to the Palestinians five, six times. Mm. The problem is they've never accepted it. I just want to, we'll to continue in the next program on this. I know Lieve kijker, ons praat oor iets baie actueel en um, ek weet jou daarvan om in Afrikaans na die program te kyk, maar ons praat in Engels, um, Ben uh, kan een bykie Afrikaans praat, hy kan een bykie, maar uh, ons moet om in acht neem en as hy sy hart met ons wil deel, moet ons in Engels praat. Ek vertrouw dat jy die program jou sal sien, onthoud dis woord actueel, die Heere sien jou.